Once again, good morning, brothers and sisters. Can you read the, the topic of our lesson together? Yes, let's read it together. The title of our lesson Christ our substitute. Once again, Christ our substitute. Let's learn a memory verse together. Can someone teach us the memory verse? Yes, Brad James. Greater love is no man to his strength to together to live. Greater love has no man than this. Greater love has no man than this. The second part that the man to lay down his life to his strength. Starting with Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 19. Let's read six verse, four verses each, starting from Nelson. Then go on. Rather from Gustavo to move all the way like that. Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Four verses each. Now the serpent was more captive than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the women, Yet, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Verse 2. The women say unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. <coughs> But, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, He shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. Verse 4 And the serpent said unto the women, He shall not surely die. Yes, 5 Giovanni, for God does know that in the day therefore. Then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be pleasant, to make one wise, she took off the food therefore. And did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they soon stood leaves together, and made themselves upwards. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Thank you. Night. Night. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I hear thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid, and I hide myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, of the tree and I did eat. 
And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, This the serpent beguiled me, and I did it. And the Lord Fourteen, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art first above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou eat, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of my life. Fifteen, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head. It shall, it shall bruise thy head, and thou be to thy husband, and he shall rule over his seed. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In the sorrow thou shalt bring. Of children of thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over him. Seventeen. And after that, thou will say, Before thou wilt hearken unto the voice of thy wife, and the children of the truth, and of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou be of it all the days of thy life. Read up to 19. Eighteen. Thorns also and the souls shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Nineteen, and in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the sound, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art turned unto dust, shalt thou return. Thank you. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 53. Yes, my brother, in that sequence, now I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 53, from verse 1 to 12, from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 53 from verse 1 to 12. Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who hath believed our God? And to whom is the arm of the Lord that revealed? To whom he shall grow up.
was oppressed and he was arrested. Yet he opened his mouth, he is a lot. Yes, I went to the slogan and every ship before the chair was done. So he opened his mouth. Eight. He was taken from the prisons and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? And for the last time, out of the wings of the living, for the transgression of the mighty people was this question. Thank you. Nine. Chapter 27, from verse 27 to 56. Matthew chapter 27, from verse 27 to 56. We continue with that order, four verses each. Sister Kemi, Sister we are moving like that. Okay, it's fine. Yes. Uh, then, the of the Germans, if Jesus can be the Roman and the other the Holy Spirit of Sophia's and this hurt him, and he was in the start of the land. And when they had spoken the coming of thorns, they took it upon his head, and the wind with his right hand, and they bowed. Thank you. 44. 
start with? Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 13. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 13 to verses 8. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Thank you. 
Thank you. So Christ, our substitute. So the main concept of our lesson of today is that Christ is the perfect substitute by which we can get salvation. That's the main concept. That Christ came to substitute the to substitute Adam, to substitute sin, so that if we have our faith in Jesus Christ and the blood shed on the cross, then we can have salvation and uh, also have all the other benefits that to come once we are once we are saved. So we are going to take our lesson step by step, beginning with our introduction. Okay, Sister Kenny, can you read the, the first paragraph of the introduction for us? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, what can we get from our first paragraph? It's not a sermon, it is a class. We have to interact. From our first paragraph, what can we see there? <coughs> yes, Nelson. Yes, from the first paragraph, we can see the purpose of mankind, which is God created men to worship and praise Him. Yes, God created men to worship and praise Him. Yes, that is true. Yes, more. Yes, is that Thank you. And one last point in the first paragraph. Yes, ma'am. You can see give them an order that is what to eat and what not to eat. He specifically told them that he was a king. Tell them the names of them that you must eat and eat well. And he gave them also the consistency of the food. That is, he gave them the eat thereof, I mean, of that food, of that food. Thank you very much. So God created men to worship him and God used to fellowship with men. God allowed men to do everything, to eat everything except the fruit of good and evil, that give you knowledge of the good and evil. So there was only one exception in God's uh, commandment to men, in God's instruction to men. Second paragraph. In that order, we are now start from the start. Adam and Eve obey the commandment of God in the design of Satan. And therefore, fell into sin and lost their image in favor of God. And because Adam and Eve sinned, every person who has ever been born from the world is born with the nature of sin in him. Then, when he commits sin, he deserves to die. Because that God claims, the soul that sinned, it shall die. Okay. And then, the, let's read the, 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 last, the, the last second paragraph and then comment then on the ones of Giovanni. But God, the same love, Adam, he was very disappointed that the would not love him. Shall die. However, 
Jesus, the Son of God, the first jewel of heaven, God's beloved, was willing to leave his beautiful home and come to earth to suffer and die that God's law might be satisfied with, without men suffering for his own sins. The angel in heaven knew that Jesus would come. They heard to look into the mystery that the Son of God would die for sinners and make them ready for heaven. It was an angel who announced to Joseph that Jesus would be born of Mary. The angel said, He shall save his people from, from their sins. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. According to the prophets, Jesus was born in Bethlehem at the age of 13 years, he started his ministry. At the end of his ministry on the earth, he made a supreme sacrifice for the redemption of mankind. Jesus died in our state. Jesus died in our state to wash away our sins. And he also shed his blood for our sanctification. Hebrew chapter 3. Thank you. So can we now comment in the last two paragraphs? Yes, for the third paragraph, what do you find there? Yes, brother. Yes. Also, that God, even though Adam and Eve they see it, but God still loves them, but they hate their sins. Okay, thank you. One more before we go to our items. Yes, ma'am. Because of God's love for them, God had a plan to send the Son to come and die so that their sins would be remitted. Thank you. So, as we are seeing in our lesson of today, God gave a single instruction to Adam and Eve. And remember, Adam and Eve, they were created in the image and likeness of God, completely the image and likeness of God. But uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, then they had now a different nature because they now could know evil and good. And even from the first son and the second one and uh, all others that came after Adam, they were born after the likeness of Adam. In them as far as spiritual life is concerned, they were born into sin. But we thank God because our God is a merciful and gracious God. Even though people, Adam and Eve sinned, Right there, God did the very one of exercise by killing an animal and trying to cover their nakedness after they were trying to hide away from, from God. And not only that, God made already a promise that the seed of the woman would come and would defeat the devil, referring to the second to the coming of Jesus when he would come and rescue men from, from so. 
Before we go to our, our items, we know that when Adam and Eve sinned, death came, sadness came, pain during delivery came, sickness came, disappointment came, poverty came, labor came as a result of sin, as a consequence of sin. Now it's very important for us to understand that Christ as substitute is coming to substitute all those things that came as a result of sin. In other words, Christ is coming to substitute death with eternal life. Christ is coming to death to substitute sickness with health, poverty with riches, pain with a joy, as long as we do the first thing first, which is the salvation of our lives. So Christ has come to substitute all those things that have been lost in the Garden of Eden. And as we go through our items, we are going to see how Christ substitutes all those things that were lost and how Christ is our perfect substitute today. May the Spirit of God lead us as we go to these items. Amen. Okay, in that order, Brother Joris can read for us item one. Item one. Hey, what, what happened to humanity that necessitated the need for a substitute? The fall of man. Genesis chapter, chapter 2, from verse 6 to 8. Thank you. Those reference we already read. Let's rather read Romans chapter 5, verse 12, and then verse 17 to 19. Romans chapter 5, verse 12, and then we jump to 17, and then finally. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Well, is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all they sin. 17. For if by one man's offense death, Pain by one, much more the which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall bear in life like one Jesus. 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Thank you. So, what happened to man that necessitated the need for substitute? The answer is the, the fall of man. So, because men fell in the garden, and then the Bible tells us all has come short of the glory of God. So there was a need for substitution. Instead of us being punished, then God asked for Jesus Christ to come and die and die for us. So sin came to one man, which was Adam, but we are seeing here from where we read. By the disobedience of Adam, sin came into the world. Jesus Christ came to substitute the disobedience of Adam. By the obedience of Jesus Christ to God, then righteousness has come to the world. So once we believe in Jesus Christ, then we are made righteous. And the Lord be with us. Point B of item one. Yes. Yes, brother. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Please. Yes. Explain to us. Sin. That is, Adam and Eve, they committed sin. They knew what God had them not to do. That's what God would have to ask all of them. They disobeyed God. Yes. Thank you. When they sin, that place where they were with God. Yeah. You know, as friends, able to communicate. Because we learned that in the food of the day, God used to come down mm -hmm. to fellowship with them. 
So they fell from that grace. They fell from that condition to the sinful condition, whereby that communication, that fellowship was no longer there. Amen. Thank you. So from there we know that uh, once uh, God told them that uh, if in the day you eat of the fruit which I told you not to eat, you will die day off. Did they die? Not physically. Not physically, they did not die there, but spiritually they were dead. And they were separated from God. So sin separates men from God. So that's why Jesus came so that he can restore again men back to God. So when we are talking about the fall of man, we are talking about uh, the first sin that uh, Adam committed, Adam and Eve committed, and that was the sin of disobedience. They did what God asked them not to do. And as a result of that disobedience, all sinful conditions came into this world. All of us are born in that sin nature. That's why we need the someone to save us, someone to substitute us, to substitute for the sins that we have committed and then save us from the life of sin. Thank you. Point B. Point yes, yes, we are moving this order. I can't tell you about it. Point B. Why would God promise to be for the Why Jesus to be Genesis 49. Okay, let's read them. Let's read them. Thank you, my brother. Let's read those references. Genesis 49, verse 10. Yeah, you will be the first one to read for us. And then Sister Maria will read for us Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. And then in that order, number 24, 17, Deuteronomy 18, 15, and then last one, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Chapter 9, 16. Yes, Genesis 49, verse 10. Genesis 49, verse 10. The serpent shall not depart from John, nor a no river from between his feet, and Jim shall not come. Thank you. Numbers 12, 13. Yes, yes. That order. Sorry, Exodus, yes. 12, 13. Thank you. The Torah of eighteen fifteen. The Torah of the Thank you. Numbers twenty four seventeen. I shall see him by one night. I shall behold him by one night. Then shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and it shall smite the summit of the mount, and destroy all the children of the earth. Thank you. Isaiah chapter seven verse fourteen. And then the other one will read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Isaiah 7, 14. And therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign before the living shall be this. For a say, a man is son and shall hold his head in the Thank you. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Yes. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 
of the increase of his government and peace that shall be mine upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The seal of the Lord of hosts will be upon me. Thank you. So, from the references that we that we read, the question is, how does Jesus? He said that Jesus is the promised redeemer. I mean, is the promised redeemer. And now we are asking now, from those references that we read, how was it prophesied that Jesus would have come and redeem us? How does Jesus uh, fulfill this requirement to be our redeemer? From the references that we read. Yes. From the point that we read, yes, ma'am. Yes. From what we have read, uh, when Adam sinned, God had a plan to send the Lord Christ, yes. his only son. And from what we have read also, we see some prophecies concerning the birth of Jesus Christ. That is, it was promised where he was born, that is from the tribe of Judah, and not to me that what is coming to do. He said he's speaking. He's coming to die, and even his death was also prophesied. Thank you. So, God promised where, how Jesus would have come and save us. And even as we read in Isaiah chapter 53, from verse 1 to 12, which is one of our references, God detailed, like, completely how we would have come, how we would have suffered, and how to rescue us. And from there we also read that he would have been born from a virgin, which is, is the only one that came to the world through such a man. And not only that, later on we're gonna see, we are going to see how those prophecies in the following items were fulfilled. But uh, one thing which we can see there is that when God promised something, he surely fulfill it. Either be it with Jesus or be it with us. So we should rely upon the word of God so that those promises, the ones that God promised, will be also fulfilled in our lives. Okay? Let's go to item two. Uh, yes, we are moving, continuing for our order. Yes, ma'am, read for us item two. Ma'am, yes, yes. What are some of the consequences of sin? Separation from God, spiritual death. Isaiah 59, verse 1. Okay. Just read all of them and then read the references. Okay. Um, travel, travel, music, sickness, disease, lack of peace. Okay, so let's see the references there. The consequences of sin. First, the first reference is Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. In that order from Sister Ophelia, then Brother James will read for us Ezekiel 1820, and then Sally will read for us uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Yes, I see. Sister Ophelia read for us Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Not just after the thank you, Ezekiel eighteen twenty. Uh, the soul that sinned and shall die, the son shall not dread the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father dread the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Thank you. Yes, Sadiq. 
Romans chapter 6, verse 23. You can read the projection on the board. Okay. So our first point is from those verses that we read, yes, it says separation from God, spiritual death. What are the consequences of sin? Which are not listed in the following items from the verse we read. Yes, ma'am. Travel and misery. Okay. Travel and misery. And then for, the, for, those, for that one, let's read uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 26. For God Okay, the sinner is given to travel. But what is the meaning of travel? The word travel, what does it mean? Travel. Yes, brother. To undergo pain, yes, that's correct. What again? Travel. Yes, Sister Ruth. Suffering. Suffering. Yes, travel is suffering. And we know when God created Adam and Eve, everything was peaceful. They had full access for everything, free of charge. But after sin, God said, Now you have to travel, you have to suffer. In the sweat of thy labor, you shall eat your bread. So that's also one of the consequences of sin, as we can see there. Travel. How about misery? What does misery mean? Misery. Misery. Yes. Extreme poverty. Yes. What again? Yes. Yes, Tarot. Hopelessness. Hopelessness. Yes. Confusion. Confusion. So we are seeing here some of the consequences of sin is. Extreme poverty, hopelessness, and confusion. Those are consequences of sin. Are you miserable? Is there confusion in your life? Are you hopeless? The good thing is that Jesus can give you hope. See? And uh, let's keep on with uh, the consequences. It reads sicknesses and disease. Let's quickly read Second Kings chapter 5, 25 to 27. Uh, Adolf, read for us. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 25 and 27. And then Kimi will read for us Isaiah chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 25 to 27. Second Kings 35, 5 to 5. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elias said unto him, Hence promised all as he has. And he said, Thou second went, no, and 36. And he said unto him, When not my heart with thee, when he may turn again from his chariot to meet thee. Is he a time to receive money and to receive garments and only yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servant and men servant? 27. 27. The leprosy of, of Naaman shall weave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper. And a leaper as wide as snow. Okay, thank you. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Isaiah chapter 1. Why should we be free and then more? Yeah, he will be both more and more. The world has sick and the world has 
Okay, so we are thinking that all the diseases that are they were, they are, and they will ever be, they came as consequences of sin. And then the last one, lack of peace. Let's read Isaiah 48, 22 and Proverbs 28. Yeah, brother. This is the but when he came, he said, Oh, and as a sort of that, nowadays, you know, when we hear all of this, from there we get the diseases. So it's a sort of that. Yes. Thank you. So sickness came as a result of disobedience to God's will. And even today, most of the sicknesses that we see in the world come as a result of disobedience. A doctor is telling people don't drink alcohol because of the consequences of alcohol. And yet people, when they drink alcohol, what happens? Most of them, they get sick. And so on and so forth. Most of the diseases, even today, they, you find out that come as a result of disobedience to the will, the will of God. But the, our happiness is that more than sickness, God has promised also healing. And we are going to see later how Jesus brought healing to us even in these days. So Isaiah 48, 22. Bravo, bravo, And then Sister Kemi. Proverbs 28, verse 1. Thank you. Yes, Sister Kemi. Yes, yeah, so lack of peace. Today we see a lot of people with uh, psychological problems, social problems. Everything is a result of sin. They obey God, and as a result of that, condemnation comes. So, one of the consequences of sin is condemnation. And condemnation comes when you feel guilty. And guiltiness comes when you disobey God's will. Well. So it is a chain. That's why sin brings lack of peace. So we spoke about the consequences. But now let's see about the promise that God made about Jesus, who is our Messiah, the one who's supposed to rescue us from sin. As we go to our item three. So come back. Brajan Pierre, read for us item three. Okay, so the promise of the coming Messiah was fulfilled through his birth. So then we are going to read John chapter 1, verse 14. Through his suffering and death, someone will read for us. Matthew, in that order, Gustavo will read for us John chapter 1, verse 14. <coughs> then Giovanni will read for us Matthew chapter 26, from 38 to 41. And then Brother Abel will read for us Mark 15, 34. And then <coughs> Sister Maria will read for us Matthew chapter. 28 for 1 to 7. John chapter 1 verse 8. And the word was made flesh, and there was no God. And the hell is glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of faith and Thank you. Yes, Joanne. John 
Yes, read for us Matthew chapter 26 from 38 to 41. Matthew 26 from 38 to 41. Yes, read for us in the last verse. 38. Then they will be unto them, and my soul is exceeding in the Sabbath. Even unto them, carry me here to a watch in the air. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he comes unto the disciples and find them asleep and say unto Peter, What could he not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, thank you. Yes, brother Edel. Yes, Mark. This is Mark. Mark 15, verse 34. And in the night hour, Jesus Christ, with a loud voice, he said, Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Lama Samaka, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why is that possible? Thank you. And then, Sister Amalia? Yes, John. Please read for us John chapter 20, verse 19 and 20. John chapter 20, verse 19 and 20. John chapter 20, verse 19 and 20. Then the same day, the This promise of, of the coming Messiah fulfilled, yes. Through his birth, we already said that he, he was he was born in Bethlehem of Judea as prophesied, and he was born from a virgin as prophesied. Now, how about his suffering and death? From the reference we read, how is this pro prophecy fulfilled? What are some of the prophecies that we can see as Jesus is suffering, as Jesus is dying, is being fulfilled? What are some of the prophecies? Yes, we are coming to you, man. Yes, what are the prophecies? Yes, time please give us one of the prophecies, which was spoken the whole time concerning the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, and it was fulfilled during his suffering. One of them that was fulfilled that was Jesus Christ. Yes. Chastised. Chastised. Thank you. That's correct. Yes. 
The flow is open. There are so many processes there. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes, ma'am. Is that for the side? Because um, when Jesus died, he, he, the garment was one, but then none of his bones was broken. Yeah. It was for the side. And the prophecy also that he would die, really, he died. And all what they did to him on the cross was also a fulfillment of prophecy. Yes. Because he was written. It was prophesied in the written, as you saw in Isaiah chapter 52. And that by his written and the blood that washes upon him, we are healed. It's a prophecy and the death. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. And we need to pay for this question. And we need to preach in the soul. Yes, one more. One more prophecy. Yes, we're about it. We need to take this government to cast the law for this. Yeah. It was also prophesied. And when I found this right here, they took one of the government and then they started playing. Yes. Thank you. So, in Isaiah 53, where we read from verse 1 to 12, every verse is there is a fulfilling of a prophecy. Especially the one Brother said, he says in verse 9, he said, He made his grave with the wicked. See, Jesus was crucified between among the two, the, two, the two thieves. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. We saw Joseph of Arimathea was a rich man. He gave his own tongue, sepulchre, so that Jesus Christ would have been, his body would lay there. So that was also a fulfilling of a, of a prophecy. So at the cross, but talking about the suffering of Jesus, can you match the creator of the universe? He's being beaten, he's being buffeted. He's being ch chastised, scorned, and uh, he was carrying the cross, carrying the cross, he couldn't. Someone has to step in to help him, have to take the cross up to the go to the place where he was there. He asked for water. What did they give to him? That was a great suffering. And he suffered because of himself. Obviously not. It was because of you and it was because of me. And it was not a cheap price. It was a very expensive price which he had to pay. And we see here when he was at the cross, for the first time, he carried, I mean, there the cross, he carried the whole sin of the world. And what was God's attitude when Jesus carried the sin of the world? What was the attitude of God? Yes, second. God forsook him at that time. Yes, God forsook him for that time. Not because Jesus uh, did something wrong, but just because he took your sins and he carried them, that caused God to look on the other side. That is to tell us that God will not overlook our sins. If God would not spare his son when he was carrying the sin of the world, he looked on the other side. Even in our lives. So if we sin, God, of course, will not be with us. So, but we thank God for the price which He paid. And because of that, He cried, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? So that was because of you. He, the Bible tells tell us where we read, let us quickly turn there in uh, Second Corinthians. Rather, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And then quickly, 2 Corinthians chapter also 5 from verse 22. Let's just read 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18 to 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from 18 to 22. 
Thank you. That is our institution, the last one. For he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay, let's continue by the four. I can pull the star again. Again, what are some of the benefits we get from from Jesus' suffering? Death and resurrection. Thank you. What are some of the benefits? The best one is salvation. Uh, we also read for Giovanni read for us Matthew chapter one verse twenty one, and then we also read for us. John chapter 3, verse 6. Matthew 26, verse 28. Giovanni 121. And then Nelson, Matthew 26, 28. And then Brother Abel, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Okay, thank you. Nelson? To break the cake. Matthew 26, 26, 28. 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission, for the remission of sins. Thank you. Yes, I have you. Uh, first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For God has not appointed us to where to where, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. So first thing first, the first benefit of Jesus suffering, death, and resurrection is salvation. What does it mean, salvation? How can one be saved? Say the salvation. How can one be saved? Can someone quickly give us the steps of salvation? How can one be saved? Because all other benefits depend upon the first one. Yes. Yes, Brother Jameson. The first thing first is that the sinner must acknowledge that he is a sinner. Yeah. Yes. And after he acknowledges that he is a sinner, he needs to believe that there is someone who can save him from his sin. That is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Believing that we will do it through confessing of his sin. Yeah. We will come to Jesus, we will confess his sin, believing that Jesus will uh, save him from his sin. Yeah. After he confesses his sin and he believes in Jesus Christ, then he has to wait for the manifestation of the power of God to save him from his sin. Yeah. As after he has received that power that will save him from his sin, the same power will make him be a changed person. And the thing that he used to do, he will do it no, no more. Not because of his power, but because of the power that he believed in and that he saved him. Yes, thank you. So that's the, that's the step. 
And that's one point which I'll make. Repentance is also a very important one, whereby we recognize that uh, you have a godly sorrow for sin. Because if you're not sick, you won't go to the doctor. If you, if you don't realize you are a sinner, then there's no need of a savior. It's when you realize that you are, you are sin, and then you have a godly sorrow for sin, and then you repent from your sin, then Jesus Christ will save you as my brother and strength the steps. And it's the Spirit of God that you bear witness with your spirit that you are sons, that you are son or daughter of God, according to Romans 8, verse 16. Thank you very much. And then another benefit of uh, yes, Jesus' suffering, it's healing. And then let's read uh, James chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. And first Peter 2 24. Okay, Sister Malia, read for us James chapter 5, 15, 15. And then Sister Kevin, read for us first Peter 2 24. Protection and provision is also another benefit. Hope of resurrection is also another benefit. There are some more benefits that are not there listed. Can we mention them? I'll mention one of them. Sanctification. Yes. What again? What other benefits? Yes. Adult grace. 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 Okay. Thank you. The grace also came through the suffering. Yes. What again? Yes. Prosperity, yes. What again? Yes. Joy. Joy. Happiness. Happiness. Peace. Everlasting life. And so on and so forth. So we keep on with our item five. All the references you can read them at home. Because of our time, we are now moving to item five, which is our last one. And uh, Sister Chocolin, can you read for us item five? Okay, so what can we give him who, he, who gave us his hope? That is a question. So the first one is our heart and love. So let's read Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And then our talent, we are going to read Romans chapter 10. 12, verse 6 and 8, our devotion and service, we are going to read Joshua chapter 22, verse 5, our substance, we are going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 and 7, in that order. So, from my sister here, yes, you, you read for us Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel must love the Lord thy God to buy of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Read for us. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. Romans 6 to 8. How can there be differing according to the grace that is given unto us? Whether for mercy, let us prophesy. According to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, ministry. Let us wait 
on our English teacher or he that teaches on teaching or he that exalted on exalting he that give let him do it in simplicity he that give with diligence he that swear swear mercy with cheerfulness Thank you. I forget that that's correct. Then, Mr. Uh, Dr. Joshua chapter 22, verse 5. Yes, what again? So Jesus Jesus gave all to us, and we should be willing to give all to him, starting with the first thing first, which is our heart, the salvation of our life. And then we should give in our talents, our time, our ability, our substance, our love, our skills. So when we give every, when we give something to God, God will multiply it. Because giving always triggers receiving. If you want to receive something from God, you should be able to give something to Him. After all, He gave us first Jesus Christ. That's why He's expecting for us also to give something to Him, which is obedience, which is our heart, which is our life. So we go to our last subtopic, which is point B. So we spoke about the things that we can give to God, but our love is incomplete if it's only to God. The Bible tells us to love God and also to love our neighbors. That means we should give to God, but we also should give to our neighbors. And therefore, we are going to mention the things that we can give to others as one of the one of the last uh, points which we're going to talk about in this lesson. Okay, point B. Can you read for us, Mama, Mama, uh, Adolf? Can you read for us, please, the last point? What can we give to others? Yes. Can you read those points there? Okay. Just the points. Yes. Love, uh, kindness, and service. Love, kindness, and service. Let's read some references there. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. In that order, Sister Sally read for us Romans chapter 10, verse 1. And then Sister Ruth, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. And then, Sister, uh, read for us uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Bravo, the man who read for us Romans chapter 12, verse 13. Okay. And then, Brad Jean Pierre who read for us Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 39. And then, Pastor will read for us James chapter 1, verse 27, in that order. Yes, it's a lyric for us. Thank 
Thank you. First John three sixteen. Thank you. Romans twelve ten. Thank you. Romans twelve thirteen. How about the one? Romans twelve thirteen. Distributing the necessity of saints, even in hospitality. Thank you. And then James chapter one verse twenty seven. Thank you. So, what can we give to others in the references that we read? <coughs> Apart from what is mentioned in this year, yes. Yes, is that your name? Hospitality, visiting others, yes. Generosity, be generous, give it to others, yes. Kindness. Kindness, showing compassion and love to others, yes. Is the room? Visitation, okay. Next, yes. What again? Support. Our money. We can give our time. There are people that they don't need, maybe they don't need $20 from you. What they need is just 20 minutes to, for, to talk to you, to explain the gospel to them. So we, there's a lot of things that we can do. We can pray for others. That's also part of giving. We can distribute literature, the tracts of the gospel, give invitation to others. So there's a lot that we can do for others. If God did, did so many for us, many things for us, obviously we can also do the best for others. And when we are doing something to others, to whom are we doing? To God. Because God say, when you do something to one of the least, you are doing it for me. So I remember always, when you are helping someone, you are helping the one who created you, which is God. And when you help the Son of God, God will also help you. So, let's now read our conclusion. Someone read what the conclusion. Brother, yes. Okay. Yes. of our lesson of today. So Jesus Christ is our substitute. And he came to substitute death for life. He came to substitute sickness for healthy. He came to substitute pain with happiness. He came to substitute death with life. He came to substitute labor with favor. He came to substitute condemnation with mercy. He came to substitute all things bad for all things good. And all that we can do is just to humble our hearts and give our lives to Him. So there's a challenge there which says, 
Have you been reconciled to God through Christ our substitute? So if not, today God can help you to reconcile with him through his son, that is Jesus Christ.